Welcome to this video in which we are being asked to compute the mass of a flat plate. So what we have given here is a region, R in R2, which is the region enclosed by the curves x is y squared and x equals 1. So let's first make a sketch of what this looks like. So we have x equals y squared which means that y equals square root of x or y equals minus square root of x. And if you plot that, x-axis, y-axis, then the square root function looks like this, y equals square root of x. And then below here, we have y equals minus square root of x. And finally, we also have the curve x equals 1. So that would be somewhere here. So this is x equals 1. And the region R is the region that is enclosed by both of these curves. So that's this area that we have here. So this here is R. And what we need to find now is the mass of the plate and the area density is this function sigma here. Sigma xy is y squared plus x plus 1. So if we want to compute the mass, we have to integrate sigma over this region R. So let's write that down on the next slide. So what I have is that the mass that we are being asked for, let's call it m, is the integral over r sigma x y dx dy. And um, let's go back to the previous slide. So if you want to integrate here, what is easiest is to say, well, if you want to find a description of this region, I'm going to say that my x values run from 0 to 1. And if I'm considering a fixed x value in between 0 and 1, then my y is going to start at minus square root of x and it's going to run up until square root of x. So I can describe the region. Let's put that here. I can describe this region R by 0 less or equal x less or equal 1 minus square root of x less or equal y less or equal square root of x. And this characterization, this description, this parameterization of the region readily gives us the integral. So I can now write my integral as the integral from 0 to 1 dx and from minus square root of x, square root of x, dy. And the function that I need to integrate is sigma function. That is y squared plus x plus 1. And now we're basically back to what we learned in calculus. So these are two integrals. First, I have to integrate with respect to y plug in the limits, and then I find an integral with respect to x, and I have to integrate that and plug in the limits. So let's see how that goes. So we have integral from 0 to 1 dx. I'm going to integrate this thing with respect to y. So the first term is y to the power 2. That's going to be 1 over 3 y to the power 3 plus x y plus y. And for y, I'm going to plug in square root of x minus square root of x, like this. So what that gives us is the integral from 0 to 1 dx. You probably see that the upper limit and the lower limit for y is, is square root of x and minus that same value. So I can write that as 2 times 
and then I get 1 over 3 x to the power 3 over 2, so that's square root of x to the power 3, x to the power 1 half to the power 3, plus x square root of x, plus x. And then I don't have to plug in the lower limit because I put the 2 there to compensate for it. Okay. So what I have found up till now is the integral from 0 to 1. Let's write a 2 in front of it. And then I have 1 over 3 x to the power 3 over 2 plus this is x times square root of x is also x to the power 3 over 2 plus x to the power uh, I made a little this should be square root of x sorry about that x to the power 1 half dx and oops I should move a little bit like this that you can see it and then let's go to the last bit of this question so we had let me copy from the previous slide two times the integral from 0 to 1 and then we had 1 over 3 times x to the power of 3 over 2 plus 1 times that same thing so together that becomes 4 over 3 x to the power 3 over 2 plus x to the power 1 half dx and I can easily find an antiderivative here that's going to be x to the power 5 over 2 and then I have to compensate so I have a 4 over 3 already and I have to put in a 2 over 5 plus this is going to be x to the power 3 over 2 and I have to compensate with 2 over 3 in between 1 and 0 so apparently what we find is 2 times, and then we have 4 times 2 is 8, 3 times 5 is 15, plus 2 over 3. So if you take them together, then we get 8 over 15 plus 10 over 15, so that's 18 over 15 which you can simplify to 12 over 5. So apparently the mass of the plate here is 12 over 5. So let's see if that is within the um, options we were given in the multiple choice question. And indeed it is. So apparently the correct answer here was B, 12 over 5. That wraps up this question. I hope all was clear and I'll see you in the next video.